For a second time in four days, the Indy 11 are back at home at Lucas Oil Stadium. And for that same number of times in said time period, a longtime rival makes the trip to Indianapolis. It is North Carolina FC that faces the Indy 11 this evening. Greg Rakestraw, Brad Hodder with you on Wish TV and ESPN+. Plus. Through circumstances that weren't his fault, Tyler Pasher only played about 20 minutes on Wednesday night. He'll have a lot of energy in the tank against this North Carolina FC squad. Against him tonight, a familiar foe, a teammate from a season ago in Ben Spees. He spent each of the last two seasons with the Indy 11. He's on loan from Indy to North Carolina this season. And the last time these two teams played, he scored one of three Indy 11 goals in a 3-2 victory. North Carolina FC, Indy 11, starting lineups. And the kickoff come your way next as you're watching Indy 11 soccer here on Wish TV. to the pilot it should be pretty similar right it's the same powertrain it's just a shorter vehicle without the third row mm -hmm. that's kind of why i'm interested in it oh it has lane assist it does lane keeping assist i, I let go of the wheel and it just turned on <laughs> i can tell right away josh i like the transmission on this better than the subaru like this i love this is cool. it was great yeah. like this would be a great next step for my car when medical care is needed, where will you turn? With Communities Connect to Care program, one call or click finds you the closest open appointment. Request a time yourself or let us do it. From a primary care doctor or virtual visit to a med check or community clinic at Walgreens. Just call or click. You can go right to our website or to me. Connect to Care from Community. What if it were your job to make the world a more beautiful, colorful place? At PPG, we think that's something we all need to do. We create, invent, and formulate amazing paints, coatings, and materials so we can make the world run faster, stronger, fresher, smarter, cooler, lighter, greener, and better for the next generation that comes along. PPG, we protect and beautify the world. Lucas Oil Stadium, more than 10,000 expect this evening for Indy 11 and North Carolina FC, the second match in a five-game homestand that spans the entire month of May and into June here at Lucas Oil Stadium. Once again, Greg Rakestraw, Brad Hodder with you here on Wish TV and ESPN Plus. And let's look back at that match three days ago, Brad, because all expectations were thrown out the window when Patty Barrett was thrown out of the game. Successive yellow cards in the first 19 minutes. Conversation with the official got a little bit over the top. Starting lineups now coming up for the Indy 11 for tonight's match. You won't see Patty Barrett as part of that starting 11 for Indy because of the red card suspension that goes into tonight's matchup. So Carl Wiemet will get the starting nod for him. Third time he has started this season. Another couple of changes for the Indy 11 in their lineup. We saw Nico Mott turn late. He is in for Kenny Walker. Remember, Kenny with the full 90 on Wednesday. He's been dealing with an abdominal injury that cost him most of the month of April. And also, after getting a night off, Macaulay King back in the 11 for Margaretti. Yes, yeah, so you got a couple guys with fresh legs, and then you take a look at also Pasher. He's going to be on fresh legs, and we met, didn't have a full 90. So you've got some guys that, that are a bit more rested than the full 90-minute game. Marios Lomas, six goals this year. He had five goals in just 23 games a season ago. He scored a goal in four consecutive games. Part of the reason why he is a more of a scorer this year is there is more of an opportunity off last year's team, Daniel Rios, now plays for Nashville. Nashville SC. 
He had 20 goals a season ago. And there you see Marios from the Netherlands. And what's going through a player's mind? You got a streak going like that. Goals in four consecutive right. games. And not just four consecutive games, but you're, you've almost got a goal a game average. But the confidence that you get when you surpass last year's numbers through 23 games gives you this unbelievable, you know, high when you're out on the field that, that you can score from any any place against anybody. That six goal number, that is good for second in the Eastern Conference of the USL, fifth overall in the league. He is only trailing Tom Barlow of New York Red Bulls. Two, eight goals for Barlow on the season. Both these teams are trailing Red Bulls, too, in terms of the standings, but they're not that far behind. These two teams both in a playoff picture in the very early stages of this season. We appreciate you being with us this evening here on Wish TV and ESPN+. Plus. The man wearing the captain's armband tonight for the Indy 11, Neville Hackshaw sends that ball launching forward towards Dane Kelly. Kelly up for the player of the month in the USL championship division. Had four goals in three games in April. Mistake on the restart by Motzer. This is Miller for North Carolina. Did not get the curl on that one he was hoping for. It. Problem averted for the Indy 11. Yeah, I'll tell you, unfortunate turnover, but a great job by the 11 to get back and make it a difficult opportunity. Mater will quickly play this ball forward, and you will see the Indy 11 try to play to their speed throughout the course of the night, especially attacking down the flanks with guys like Tyler Pasher and Dane Kelly. We reference in the open of the broadcast, Pasher saw the field for just 20 minutes. That is because of that yellow, then yellow, then red shown to Patty Barrett. Mark Gurney was forced to make a tactical substitution as that ball headed back to Evan Newton. And wow, couldn't play with his hands, had to play it with his feet. But what composure, you know? That ball out of bounds and, and give North Carolina FC a throw in in your defensive third. And I've seen him do this a bunch of times this year. Under pressure, he's calm and delivers the right ball. And finish the thought on Pasher as he's trying to get the ball back here. But again, a giveaway by Indy. Advantage being played, and Lomas launches that one. And much like many of the opportunities that Newton saw on Wednesday night, not exactly a significant threat on goal. Evan last year with FC Cincinnati. Third clean sheet of the season in the nil-nil draw on Wednesday. Top goalkeeper in the USL a season ago. And one of four members of that FC Cincinnati squad that now play for the Indy 11. Patty Barrett's one you won't see tonight. Again, Kenny Walker available for selection off of the bench for Indy 11 head coach Mark Running. The other, Tyler Gibson. As we speak. You know, you asked about the, the changes in Lomas with six goals in seven games, and, and one of those, and you've seen it here in the first two minutes, is the confidence you have as a player when you've got that kind of statistical production. He's hit a ball from outside the box with his right foot and his left foot in the first two minutes. He's got no fear of pulling the trigger at any time. Seeing some early press here by North Carolina FC. Time now for the injury report brought to us by Community Health Sports Medicine, official sports medicine provider to the Indy 11. And two players on that injury report, Ilya Illich, as well as Eugene Sterikoff, both out of the 18 for tonight's contest. Illich appeared in the 18 on Wednesday, but we knew it would be highly unlikely he would see the field on Wednesday evening. Village in the 18 tonight as well, but again, do not expect him to play. And Hackshaw has to shield away an oncoming North Carolina player to give Evan Newton another goal kick. But so far, the long distance ball targeted for Dane Kelly. Could not track it down, and a foul has been whistled against the Indy 11. Captain's armband, Stephen Miller. He 
He has been a longtime member of this franchise dating back to their days as the Carolina Railhawks, which is what they were known as before making the jump to the USL a couple of years ago with the Indy 11. And there is a long history and mostly a positive one for the Indy 11 when playing against North Carolina FC. In the previous five years, Indy has nine wins against this franchise, including the last three times they have played. The first match in Indy 11 history took place on April the 12th of 2014 against the then Carolina Railhawks, a 1-1 draw. And a match that you will see, well, the celebration afterwards of at halftime, probably the most famous <laughs> match in Indy 11 history, June 11th of 2016, the night where Indy beat Carolina 4-1 to wrap up the spring season championship. What a game. That match is shown in highlights before every home game for the Indy 11 here at Lucas Oil Stadium. Pasher in applying pressure. Uh, he's just ferocious on the ball. Tommy McCabe and Pasher tied up in a battle. And because of the foul, McCabe will win it. Here you see McCabe. You talk about that North Carolina game being in all the highlights and one of the reasons was not just because it was the spring championship But the way that it unfolded you not only had to win but you had to win by three goals Offside flag goes up for Lomas Get the chance to talk about our keys this match presented by your Central Indiana Honda dealers the official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11 well, the first for the 11 is defensive focus. You heard as we were talking post game with some of the players that as soon as that red card happened, they all got together and started talking about elevating their focus. And if they can come with that defensive discipline, they're going to be impossible to break down. The next is to shift the screen. McCabe and Fortune sit as a front screen in front of the back four for North Carolina, and that's going to congest the space for Ina Voltson and Kelly. The 11 will do well to get the ball wide, draw that screen out, and then open up some channels for Kelly and Ina Voltson. For North Carolina FC, control the tempo. You take a look at the, they didn't have to play midweek, and the 11 did, and they played a man down. There's a lot of minutes on their leg. If North Carolina can control the tempo, it's gonna play well for them, and to find Perez's space. If you look at moments, and they've tried to hit it a couple times already, where, the back line is high for Indy 11. They have got Perez on the outside wing, and that kid can fly. Throwing coming here for North Carolina FC. North Carolina FC, just one loss so far this season. That was in one of their two road games against Atlanta United. Good look at Ben Spees. Aaron Guillen now in the throw in. Honored this week by the USL, part of the championship team of the week. Each of the last two games for North Carolina FC, they have won by three goals, including 4 1 last week against Hartford Athletic, who finally gets to play their first home game tonight after they were on the road for eight consecutive matches. And they've lost all eight of them, including one here five weeks ago. High boot whistled against Macaulay King. Sergey Demianchuk is our referee for tonight's match. Spees has played against the Indy 11 before. He spent 2016 in Minnesota United before they made the jump to Major League Soccer. This is not an altogether new experience for him. Cronali got there first for Indy. And Iose. Oh, what a turn. Tremendous play. Now Kelly. And here goes Pasher. On to the races. Pasher, not a guy that's likely to be caught. Pasher did a great job. What defending by Guillen. Oh, Guillen. my goodness. We have not seen Pasher caught from behind like that before. You can see why he's on the championship team of the week. And I'm not sure why he slowed up. If he was looking to set up the goalkeeper um, or if he was waiting and, and thought that Dane Kelly might have been offsides as he looked like he might have wanted to play him through. 
That's exactly the scenario you had set up if you're the Indy 11. Oh, you're, you're, you're heartbroken right now. You know, for 30 yards, that looked like it was going to be a, a one a one nil lead. Pasher did score against North Carolina FC a year ago. When these teams played in early April. A one goal lead that stood up because of a penalty that was saved in the 91st minute by Owine Fawn Williams. One of five road wins a season ago for the Indy 11. Up until early in the season, it was the only goal that Pashard had for the Indy 11 in limited minutes because of injury a season ago. Great step by Hackshaw. Hackshaw a pair of goals this season. Iose, the chief creator for the Indy 11. Hackshaw sends it in, and Tam Bacchus is there. His first touch of the game, his second season in goal for North Carolina FC. He's played every minute of every match so far. A couple of clean sheets. Only once has North Carolina FC allowed more than a goal in a game this year. That was their lone loss against Atlanta United, too. On the season, Tam Bacchus enters with 18 saves. Sports the match presented by Community Health Sports Medicine. Dream big, work hard, and finish strong. Spees. Oh, what a ball. Fantastic ball. Trying to play it across for Lomas Miller on the follow-up. Couldn't get there. Great read by Gibson. Gibson sniffed that one out for Indy. And that was important because King was just a step behind his mark. Another very creative touch by Mottern and now draws the foul to calm things down for Indy. Tremendous play here by the former Indy 11 man. Kelly, Tambakis did enough on that one. Yeah, and I tell you, it looked like it held up correctly for Dane Kelly. Both these teams have shown the ability to launch the attack quickly. These teams played last year. The Indy 11 got out to an early two-goal lead, at least here in Indianapolis in August, which the North Carolina would equalize in the second half before Juan Guerra got the game winner for the Indy 11 that night. Juan now on the Indy 11 sidelines. Pasher on its side. Pasher tries to find Kelly. Kelly left foot and steers it wide. There's Indy 11 head coach Martin running in his second season. I know he was very proud of his team's effort on Wednesday night as well. He should be. I'd say anybody that witnessed it, if you're here in the building, if you're watching on television, anybody that witnessed it had to be proud. It was just an absolutely heroic effort. Evan Newton in the effort had to record one save on Wednesday night. And that's what, you know, when you look at that, if you can defend that way with 10 guys, just by clicking in and understanding your rotations, and you you could hear the elevated communication between Newton and the back line. If you bring that same mindset when you're 11 on 11, you're going to be impossible to break down. Good play by Hackshaw. Nebbiel wearing the captain's armband tonight. If Matt Watson enters the game, it'll go back on him. But typically when Matt has not been in the game, it's been Patty Barrett that has worn the captain's band. But in Patty, not here this evening. He'll be back in action when the Indy 11 return. In USL play in two weeks, right here at Lucas Oil on May the 18th. When Indy plays host to the Charleston Battery, Hackshaw's former club. The next team after night for Indy will be in the U.S. Open Cup. That will be at the Selig Bowl on the campus of Butler against either Lansing Ignite from USL League One 
Or from AFC and Arbor from the NPSL. Spees again, good looking ball. Yeah, they've been looking for that ball, just trying to find that space for Perez. One of the tough things with the three back system, as the ball comes out to this side, like you've got when they played it out to Ben Spees, you've got Hackshaw that's tucking in and staying connected to the center back. And that leaves that, that pocket of space open for Perez on the outside. So you're going to need a little bit more from Ioze in covering Perez as Hackshaw gets pulled into the middle. Ioze's got three options in front of him. Likes to calm things down and finds a pocket of space for Tyler Gibson. Fan select is the official ball supplier of the USL Championship in many of the finest leagues in the world. Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation. For the latest Select products and special offers, visit SelectSportAmerica.com. Tambakis out to pounce on it quickly. A very familiar name and face on the sidelines for North Carolina FC, Dave Sarakin. As in, yes, the coach of the U.S. men's national team for most of 2018 and a longtime assistant in that program under Bruce Arena. And as my partner was telling me, a player that scored a goal on him in a match. You might explain that story. Hey, he was telling you that in private, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we were playing in an exhibition game. There was a, a retirement uh, get-together uh, from old Chicago pros to recognize Carl. Oh, here we go. Pasher finds some space, plays it oh. across. A bit too strong for Dane Kelly. Ina Bolton will track it down. And the counter has been the best look for the Indy 11 so far. Now we have a player, Miller comes up a bit hobbling for North Carolina FC. We're playing on. King keeps it in play. First touch gets away from Pasher. Miller soldiering on right now. We'll keep an eye on him. Currently off of your screen. It's clever what they're doing with Spees. They're moving him out of the middle at times to get the ball and to try and open up the spaces for their, their wing mids to get in. Right idea. Just pull that back a yard or two. Yep. And Dane Kelly might have had his fifth goal of the season. Fans, you can show your Indy 11 pride and get your exclusive. Indiana Members Credit Union, Indy 11 debit card at any Indiana Members Credit Union branch or online at imcu.com today. Good read by Ioze. Second time around, the ball just found him. Now Ina Voltsen off to the races. I like the thought. I like the thought. The back line was still a little bit high. Ina is just trying to lay it through a seam for Dane Kelly. Ina Voltsen, a pair of goals this year for the Indy 11. But he's really tried to play the role of creator, it seems, a lot with both Pasher and Kelly. Well, he has that ability. He can score goals. He had 20 goals last season, but he also had 10 assists. He's great at drawing pressure to him and then finding the open man. Jose will play that ball off the side to buy a little time for his teammates to drop further back down the field. And Hina Bolts a great hustle. Could have easily let that ball go across the sideline. But it said earns a throw in for his team. So it was about at this point in the match on Wednesday night that things turned for the Indy 11. From the 20th minute on, they played a man down.
Space to operate for Cronali. On loan from the Columbus crew. Possessions like this are so important for Indy on Wednesday legs that they can kind of dictate, control the tempo, make the uh, North Carolina have to spend their energy defending. Miller appears to be right after that uh, brief stumble a few moments ago. Kelly pressuring Sam Brotherton, one of the new faces on this North Carolina FC roster. Brotherton originally from New Zealand and has spent time playing for their national team. Brotherton played his college soccer at the University of Wisconsin. And also spent time in the Sunderland system as well. Long distance ball here, Newton. Realizes exactly where he is in the field very well. Found the 18 yard box to make that play a bit easier. And Cronali had that one covered. I thought Cronali was at his best that we've seen him in his brief time here on Wednesday night. It, it was fantastic because I tell you where Tampa Bay started to find success in the second half was bringing that ball to the top corner of the box on both sides and then serving it in between the 6 and the 12. And he did a fantastic job of not only winning and controlling play there, but also recognizing when to have one of his teammates step in and help. Some nervous moments early for the Indy 11, however. The best scoring opportunity was on the counter from Pasher that was thwarted by Aaron Guillen. Let's say the pitch was tilted the opening few moments for North Carolina FC. It's been more the way of the Indy 11 as of late. The speed of Pasher display again finds Kelly. Kelly tries to cut it back to Ina Bolson exactly at the moment he was heading for the back post. And then Iose will pick up a whistle. Yeah, and you talk about how it, it kind of slanted towards North Carolina those first few minutes. One of the things, both of the really dangerous opportunities came off of Indy 11 turnovers. And so it's really comforting when you can start to see a team that comes out, maybe gives a couple of uh, unfortunate breaks to the other team, is able to settle in and then retake control of the ball. Tambakis awaits. To blast this ball some 75 yards down the field. There goes Pasher again. That Iose Pasher combo on the left side. Something that should make Martin Rennie smile when those two can link up because it rarely happened last year. Iose didn't have the number of injuries that Pasher did, but. It was rare that those two could play together a year ago. Right, and what a great compliment. You've got the pace and creativity of Tyler Pasher, and you've got the technical ability to deliver the ball to whatever pocket Pasher's running into from Iose. You know, there's two ways to stop it. Either you've got to drop in and keep Pasher in front of you and give him the space underneath you, or you've got to get up and you've got to press Iose and deny him the serve in. However, Iose can take anybody off the dribble. Fans follow the Indy 11 and the rest of the USL Championship all season long on ESPN+. Plus. Home to the USL, MLS, UFC, and more. Join the over 2 million sports fans. have already discovered ESPN+, Plus and watch the championship live every week. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. The Indy 11 faithful still waiting to see their team score a home goal this year. Now let me explain that to you. This is the third home match. Nil-nil on Wednesday. And in the season opener, at least at home, against Hartford Athletic, the only score was an own goal from Hartford. This Indy 11 team has scored 11 times away from Lucas Oil Stadium. But the home team yet to pick up their first goal without the assistance of their opponents 
here at Lucas Oil this year. Good vision. Lomas was just waiting for that back pass. Pressure by Lomas. Goal kick coming for Evan Newton. One face and name we won't be seeing tonight for North Carolina FC. Austin Deleuz. Again, one of the many longtime members of this North Carolina franchise. He is out with an ankle injury. He has been a stalwart for them for a long time. One of the great things about this North Carolina franchise is how they develop and keep their own. So many of these guys grew up in their academy system and then, you know, worked their way onto the first team. And you take a look at Austin Deleuze. What's he been there? Eight years? Eight years. And through that time, and that's one of the great things about getting a good guy in a good organization is how involved he's gotten into the community over the eight years. Pasher with Iose making the overlapping run. Rare time of ball got away from Iose and again, he'll pick up the foul. The offended party was DJ Taylor for North Carolina FC. That was a rare time of touch got away from Iose. This North Carolina franchise has been in existence since 2007. This start, 14 points through seven games, is their best since 2011. Four wins, two draws, and just one solitary loss. 3-0 winners two weeks ago against Charlotte, 4-1 last week against Hartford. Also then their lone weekend off that North Carolina FC had. They played a friendly against Club Nicasa from Liga MX and scored a 2-1 victory back on March 23rd. That was during the international break. Kelly, well done to control that one. That's such a tight seam. Iose, look at back post. And a foul has been called against Indy. And that's where that front screen of McCabe and Fortune make it so difficult to try and attack, attack through the center. It's just a block of players. It gives you no space and, and very little, very small channels to try and weave that ball through. So, you know, getting it out to Macaulay King or Iose and seeing if you can shift that screen out to the side and then look to come into the middle is going to be more effective. Fans, you can join us every Saturday morning for Soccer Saturday on 107.5 FM and 1070 The Fan. Again, tonight is Brad Ring Night, honoring the all-time leader in match appearances for the Indy 11. Ben Spees was a part of the show as well. He even had a special me message from Indy 11 owner Ursal Ozdemir. Of course, you can go back and listen to that show anytime that you like as Spees gives it a go. We've seen him do that with positive results here in the past. To listen to today's Soccer Saturday or any other from past library, go to 1070thefan.com. And the 11 has to be careful. They've been very fortunate. They've had three critical turnovers right on the top of their defensive third. And North Carolina has settled for a quick shot from 20 or further. And on that one, I thought they could have tucked it in behind Hackshaw pretty quick uh, and, and had Perez come in on it. Jose saw King making a run. And Guillen takes no chances. Corner coming. And that means that Iose will likely make his, make his way all the way across the field to take the corner, which gives guys like Hackshaw Cronali time to get to the attack for Indy. King, the right back, or really right wing tonight for the Indy 11. You know, you looked at last year, Iose's target was pretty much we met. It was the tallest, biggest yep. body in there. Now you look with Cronali and Hackshaw. you got three pretty big targets. Hackshaw does have two goals this season. And we met kind of got popped in the face trying to break free for some space. Tommy McCabe, the player he got tied up with. 
And that's the reason for said conversation. Yes, Carl Lament had three goals last year, all of them on service from Ioza. All corners or were any? It was all corners, too. Ioze headed down, but right to Tambacus, and that was from Cronali. Jose does have one assist so far on the year. And frankly, this Indy 11 team has been so much better in the run of play than they were a year ago. For this team to score a lot last year, it had to come off of set pieces. Right. right. Whether it was corners or... And, and look at what North Carolina is setting up. They've run this two, three times already. Ben Spees, who's the, the center in the line of three in the midfield, tucks out to the left side, draws the backs, and even Ioze over to this side of the field, opening up more space for Perez. And every time that they've done this, they've looked to tuck that ball into that space for Perez to run onto. This portion of the match brought to us by Honda Manufacturing of Indiana, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. Came with all kind of real estate to work with. The true rookie from Young Harris College in Northern Georgia. It's been a gold mine for Louisville City over the last couple of years. And the 11 starting to mine in that territory as well. Hey, you got to tip your hat to the coach down here. He is finding quality players and then developing them for this level. Ilya Illich, again, we've not seen much of him this year because of injuries. Double digit goals for Lou City last year. He, too, is an alumnus of that program. Throw in coming here by DJ Taylor. Taylor, one of four players that has appeared in every minute of every match so far this season. Combsia, Aaron Guillen, and Alex Tambacus, the other four that have done that for North Carolina. Miller, we'll go to that to Speeds. Good looking ball here. Opportunity on the cross, what back post. But the left foot not on target. But that's the best buildup of the match to this point for North Carolina. What a ball, what a ball. Starts with Ben Spees finding that right pass and the early serve instead of trying to take Hackshaw off the dribble. Miller got a boot to it. He's got a goal and three assists so far this year. And what meant will bring the ball forward. Be sure to tune in coming up on Wednesday at 8 o'clock Eastern time for the ESPN USL Championship Game of the Week on ESPN2. As the Tampa Bay Rowdies that we saw here on Wednesday night play another midweek match as they take on Nashville SC and a pair of certain playoff contenders. It's the week's best match on Game of the Week, Wednesday, May 8th, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2. Trey Fortune. Picked up the foul again. Another one of the guys, and you've talked about this a couple of times already. Guys that start young with this North Carolina program and continue to develop. The one that, that you know, when, when you read it, it's just mind blowing. And you see in the notes, DJ Taylor, their right back, started with their youth club at the age of six. Six. That's how academies do it, right? That's the that's whole the way, idea. That's the way you're supposed to do it. And then, you know, to have a pro team that's attached to the club where you can actually see your dream come to life is so impressive. 
Tried to slide it over to King. Now Spees. And switch up the side of the attack. Kian plays it in, and Newton will watch it go harmlessly around and over the crossbar. So fans that have been here two nights out of the last four have seen nothing but scoreless soccer so far. Kelly trying to fix that for Indy. Played it across for Ina Bolson. That pass was errant, but King will give it a go. And that was deflected. Another corner coming. Well, I tell you, when that ball was coming across the top of the box, you could see Macaulay King saying, hey, I scored on this just a few weeks ago. Very similar to his goal scored against the Charlotte Independents back in week number two. Last service was at the back post, just outside of the six from Iose. Four goals, but many more assists a year ago for Iose. Headed away. Nina Bolton gets it back in. Oh. Nina Bolton again with the right foot, doesn't get through. What fight. And now Pasher creates a window of space. And that's another corner. And that's all because of the speed of Tyler Pasher. Uh, you, you, you saw it in the heart of both Ina Voltson and Pasher. They're just not going to let them clear the box. Another look here. Jose, we met. Tambakas didn't get all he wanted to on it. We met again. And now the Indy 11 will reorganize just a bit. But Hackshaw would like to have that one over again. You keep giving Iose, that may look from the corner flag, though. Good things will happen. Yeah, and I tell you, the last thing you want to do as a goalkeeper, when you have a soft clearance and you don't clear the box correctly, the last thing you want to do is see that ball just slowly roll back out to an open Iose. Foul whistle against McCauley King. Or is that foul going in the other direction? It is. So Miller gets whistled for the violation. How about the engine of Tyler Gibson on Wednesday night? He just, he ran and ran and ran. I'm surprised to see, you know, such energy in his step tonight. He's a young man that lost a good chunk of his season a year ago to an early season training injury with FC Cincinnati. So he is valuing every minute he is on the field this year. And he has played every minute for Indy this year. My turn. Good read. Keeps the attack alive. Pasher. In a bolt set. Love it. He's not afraid to hit it from anywhere. Pair of goals for Ina Boltson so far this season. Had 20 last year in Orange County in his first year in the States. This sports of the match presented by the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Take your business to the next level in a state that works. Nina Bolton's been asked to play more of kind of a, a creator's role, it seems, with this team so far this year. 
but he will get his opportunities to score, no doubt about that. This is Comcia. Did not mention his name all that much tonight. One of the two center backs, North Carolina FC. Good pressure by Ina Bolson. Great switch. Iose plays route one to Pasher. Leaves it for Kelly. And Taylor up for the challenge. What? And frankly, watching these two teams play, they look amazingly yeah. similar in how it they play. Really is. They, they both got pace and creativity. They're both, you know, making great decisions. That was such great build up there. It was just a, a great play by Taylor to poke it away before Kelly could get to it. Our final five minutes plus stoppage time of the first half. Brought to you by your Central Indiana Honda dealers and Iose. Is that the second right-footed shot we've seen from him this year? Which is two more than a year ago? <laughs> He's trying to keep everybody honest. Had four goals last year. Three of them were spot kicks. The other was that remarkable bend oh, around the wall. That was ridiculous. That's the Charleston ridiculous. battery. If Wednesday night was the best nil-nil draw you could see from an Indy 11 perspective. That was the best 3-3 draw you ever seen, just period, that match against Charleston last year. And that's who is up next for the Indy 11 in terms of league play here in two weeks on May the 18th. Indy off next weekend. They'll play again in 11 days in Open Cup play. And that will be at Butler University. Hatshaw, the run going. Kelly in front. On side. Eleven now will play it back to a bet to organize. Good little skip. Kelly. Didn't get the touch he wanted to on it. Taylor will launch the counter. That's, I'm not sure that was a foul that needed to be given by Pasher. Yeah, but I tell you, Taylor's been impressive. Yep. His, his pace in short bursts to be able to get that ball away from Kelly and then this one away from Pasher has saved them two really dangerous looks. Taylor, 21 years of age. Last year, 30 starts. Another one of those North Carolina FC Academy products. We'll talk more about kind of the future of Academy teams in the USL coming up as part of our halftime show. Great turn. Kelly was the target. Homesia had him covered. Of course, also at halftime, a special tribute to Brad Ring, both here in the building as well as on the broadcast. One of two Indy 11 players with over 100 career appearances. Iose wow. looking for King, and Gian got to it first. Now, Gian has been the defensive stopper for North Carolina FC. Little doubt about that tonight. King taking some time here. There will not be much in the way of added time at the end of this first half. Stoppages have been minimal to non-existent. <laughs> Kelly the flick for Pasher. Just so creative. Well defended by Mater. Mater getting his fifth start in seven games. Here at the very tail end of Wednesday night's match. Love that ball. 
Now Kelly. Slides it across, but again. That last pass in the attacking third has just been off for the Indy 11 tonight. Here's Manny Perez. Ada Bolton's onside. Left foot, Tabakis. It's the first time he's truly been called upon tonight. Ada Bolton's looking for his third goal of the season, and that's it. There will be zero added time at the end of half number one. It's been entertaining. It's been back and forth. And much as these score would indicate, Brad, it's been absolutely dead even in the first 45. And it's an exciting game to watch. We've watched, what, three 45-minute 0-0 zero, zero halves, and they've been some of the most exciting that I've seen. I would say that Wednesday was exciting from the home perspective. This has been exciting going both directions. Absolutely. Both sides creating chances. Neither side yet to cash in. Indy 11, North Carolina FC. The Indy 11 looking for their 10th ever win against this franchise. It's not coming easy so far. Scoreless at Lucas Oil Stadium.